Wendell, thank you so much for having me in this beautiful home of yours. I would never get to see it if you didn't let me in. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So I really want to know what made you decide to just live in Goa and not move anywhere else. For the longest time I can remember, we used to come to Goa for a holiday. And I remember my parents and my aunts and everyone saying, uh, since they were kind of migrants that went to Bombay for work, they used to always say, when we retire, we'll move to Goa. After I, I lived in the Middle East and later on in the US in Los Angeles and in Paris, it was in Paris that I realized that, you know, one could, um, I kept meeting professionals that um, were kind of coming to Paris just for the work but living in the countryside. And I said, this is a wonderful way to live, maybe I should do the same in Goa. So it was there at the back of my mind. That you don't have to be in the particular city where work no. is to be able to still do well. Especially not with clothing, I mean, I just need to show my face on ramp for, you fashion know, Wales India Fashion, fashion Week. Yeah. yeah, in Delhi or Bombay and uh, that's fine. That's, as long as they get the clothes on time. So I said I would do it, but I didn't know how it was going to happen. Um, I dreamt one day when I was in the Middle East, I, I dreamt I was walking in this lovely house, the Briganza house. And so this was, was a Briganza house? Yes, it belonged to a family called the Briganzas and it was known in the entire village as the best house in the village. They called it Casa Dona Maria, after the grandmother of the old lady, uh, her mother-in-law actually. And um, the dream was so eerie because, uh, do you know, normally when you wake up, you tend to forget a dream. Yeah. This kind of stayed with me. I mean, and stayed with me strangely because as a child, the walls are so high that you, as a child, one could never look over the wall and I never knew what the house looked like. So you had never been to the house I before? I had never been to the house before. But in my dream, I was walking in the house and everything was clear. From the chandeliers to the tables to the paintings and this was like bizarre. And my mother met Mrs. Briganza and said, you know, my son dreamt uh, of your house. And she said, when he comes down on leave from Oman, I'd like to meet him. Well, I did meet her. I walked in and then instead of going through that door, which anybody would, I said, no, the hall is upstairs on the right. And I went right and that was her first shock. And then things kept popping in my head. I knew that her husband lived in the room on top. And I said, your, your husband lived here. By then she was completely spooked and we realized that I might have had a kind of a reincarnation connection with this big fat house. Seven years later, I get a call from her daughter saying that mommy said to sell the house only to you because we are taking her to live with us in the UK. I moved in two weeks and I, I inherited this lovely house. So basically everything was like a divine connect for you at that point? It was. I mean, I'm not a religious person though I'm definitely spiritual and I definitely have a sixth sense. Oh, you do? Uh, it, it's been with me since childhood. I think after that dream, I'm sure I believe you have a sixth sense. <laughs> it helps me in fashion, I'll tell you. It really works of in course, fashion. Of course, if you can see the future Because I can see the future, future trends. trends. <laughs> <laughs> then you can easily make your clothes and probably that's why you're so amazing at, at your work. But um, you think Goa or this home or everything around you here has influenced your designs? Most definitely. I was, yeah, when I was in Bombay and I was already famous, I was still searching for a style. But when it's when I came to live here, being so close to nature, we began to weave, you know, pineapple fibre with silk and banana with uh, cotton. This whole eco thing, which the words were not coined at that time in India in 93. Nobody knew the word minimalism, nobody knew, knew the word resort wear and definitely not eco-friendly. And we did it all at that time because Goa gave it to me. I said, you know, how do I... And I know for a fact resort wear now is inspired completely by you. <laughs> yeah, I mean at that stage nobody put a like a beaded bikini uh, as a choli with a sari, you know. It was when we, when we put it on, you know, Malaika, everyone said, wow, I want that choli, it looks so sexy. Goa gave me all of that. I wanted uh, something very, very difficult to do. Um, I wanted the people when they wore the clothes to, uh, uh, to be so light and to be so fluid and so dreamy that so if they close, yeah, and, and if they close their eyes in New York or in Bombay or Delhi, they would think of Goa. Thank you so much for sharing all these things with us, which no one really knows. Mm -hmm.